Well, hello and welcome to the show. If you're one of those people that struggles mounting your horse, if you're one of those people whose horse won't stand still to be mounted, if you're one of those people who's always looking for a way to get a little bit of a lift up, this show is right on for you. We're gonna talk about mounting blocks and teaching your horse to come pick you up from wherever you are. That's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Gonna take a ride on one true horse. You know, when we're out riding, sometimes it's nice to be able to get off and not worry about getting back on. And um, for sure, it's always nice to have a tool that will teach my horse how to stand still. We came up with this exercise a long time ago. In fact, I think we filmed the show on mounting blocks in our very first season on RFD TV. We're gonna go back and revisit that today and talk about that because we've never revisited it in any way and some of you didn't ever get to see that. We think about teaching our horse to come pick us up. If I take this little whip and I tap this horse right here on the hip, where will she go? Well, naturally she's gonna move away from me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use release to teach this mare to come pick me up. Now this is really a simple exercise. One of the things I want you to do is envision a line that sets outside of her foot a half an inch. It just floats right there. It's an imaginary line. And every time she steps over that line in any way, she's going to get a release. Now Ruby's a pretty sensitive horse, so I don't expect this to take real long. It takes a dull horse, maybe 15 to 20 minutes to start getting the idea, and a very sensitive horse, sometimes two to three minutes to start getting the idea. I like to work up parallel to a fence. By getting parallel to a fence, she can only go away from me so far. I use the bit to stop her from going forward. I use the stick to stop her from going backwards. And pretty soon she realizes she needs to move her body. The only place to move it is towards me. I'll take my hand, hold it up in the air, and I'm gonna give her a verbal cue. I hold the rein, and I just kiss to her with my hand in the air. I tip the whip back where she's not really seeing it. Kiss to her, when nothing happens, I tap in rhythms of three. Nothing happens, and there's just a slight pause. One, two, three, one, two, three. She tries to go forward, I stop her. She tries to go backwards, I stop her, right there. The moment that hip starts my way, instantly release her, okay? You don't wanna get in a fight, you don't wanna get in a war. You, by, by going one, two, three, pause, one, two, three, you're not releasing, it's just a slight pause. If you've ever taken a spoon or a stick or anything and tapped the top of your hand, what you'll notice is if you stay consistently rhythmic, pretty soon your skin goes numb because you've driven all the blood away from the nerve endings. And so that area goes numb and pretty soon you don't feel it. The horse's skin does the same thing. By working in rhythms of three, you go one, two, three, pause, one, two, three, pause, one, two, three, pause, one, two, three, pause. That pause allows feeling to come back to that area that you're working on. You wanna be really consistent with this. You ask her again, you wanna to touch the same spot on her hip. I just hold my hand up, cause that's gonna become my cue. <laughs> ask her to come over. One, two, three, one, two, three, right there. She steps that hip forward a little bit, I'm gonna release it. Now I'm gonna quit counting because I don't want her to think that's part of the verbal cue. I just do that for you. If she's gonna step that hip over there that quick, I'm gonna release it and reward it. That's fantastic. She's getting the idea, right? She's starting to understand, if I don't want him to touch me with that stick, I need to move to him. Give her a second, she doesn't step my way, I reinforce it. Good. That's why I like a short little uh, dressage whip, works really nice, you can kind of fold it back against your elbow. Right there. Now you need to keep asking for more each time, okay? You wanna ask for more each time. Now this time I wanna come back over here and she needs to go all the way to where she was and a little more, okay? So you notice I didn't just accept her stepping out anymore. Now she needs to go where she was, release it, and try again. Now, I don't want to get in a situation where my horse won't move away from me. So I always take the end of my whip, 
and I just work right here in front of the back cinch and push her back away. Make sure you have a cue out of the cue in, okay? Everything we do, there needs to be where we start and where we stop. I wanna make sure she knows to get away from me every bit as much as she knows how to come to me. Now, my horses all learn that the very first time I get around them. The very first time I take up on a halter and lead rope, I start teaching them to move their body away from me. So she knows that very readily, but I wanna still come back and practice it. Okay, so I'll pick up now. Here was our target, right here. So when I ask her, I want her to come all the way past half and step one more step over to, so we're back where we were. Let the cue end. She's coming forward. There's the reinforcement. There we go. Right there. Good girl. Good girl. Now, she's not terribly comfortable with the concept of pushing on me, right? She's not necessarily sure she wants to push me into that fence. So right here, she might kind of bounce away from me. No, nope, she's going to step all the way. No, right there. So when she starts bouncing away, I come back to the cue. And she's saying, but Ken, I'm not supposed to step on you. Well, I don't want you to step on me, but I want you to come. No, all the way. No, keep coming. You got to crowd me that last little bit because I want you to come all the way to where I can get reach the stirrup. There, right there. Good. And it's hard because she's trying so hard and you want to release her because she's trying. You can't release her until she achieves the next step, until she goes where you wanted her to go. Now, I'm not ready to climb up on the fence yet. I'll come down here and push her away. Make sure she moves away. I want this to be really consistent. It's a simple exercise. It's not rocket science. But it is important that you do all of the pieces right and realize that your timing is critical. Your timing is really critical. If she's trying and you keep spanking on her butt and you're just tapping, right? I mean, honestly, I'm tapping my own hand as hard as I'm tapping her butt. You're not whacking these horses. You're just tapping them lightly. But it's your timing that makes all the difference. If she steps across that, that line, you have to release immediately. If you don't, she's going to miss it and it's going to take you all day. She's going to get mad. She's going to start throwing herself around, kicking out, throwing a fit. You've got to go at it cautiously. Hold my hand up. There we go. She's got the cue. Give her the verbal cue to reinforce it. And it really will happen for you just this fast at home. Got to come all the way. Come all the way. Right there. Good. Now from here, I could pick up, climb up on the fence and step on her. But I'm not ready for that just yet. Because I like to practice it from the fence first. So what I'll do is I'll take my rein. I'll climb up on this fence. We'll eventually get to a mounting block. Keep her to me. Bring her all the way over there. All the way. There, right there. Now, if your horse is one of those horses that won't stand still to be mounted, when you can make him come right here, this close, if he goes to move away, you tell him come back, you have completely fixed your mounting issue. Now, right now, we're at the fence. Moving away from the fence becomes much more difficult. We're going to talk about that right after this. Once I've got the fence going well, then I move away from the fence, but not too far. I put my mounting block out here where there's nothing around us, and I can pick up my hand and ask her to come to me. If she misses it, I'm going to pick up on that. When she starts floating away from me, I'll just keep asking, gently asking, and tilt right there. She moves away, I'll come back to it again. There. And I just go with her and make it consistent. That's why you don't want to get too far away from the fence. Bring her all the way over, good girl. You want to be able to work from your mounting block back to the fence. Release the horse, reward her, bring her back over here, and you're gonna do it again. 
because if you're like me, you don't carry a mounting block with you out on the trail. You need to climb up on a rock or a log or a boulder, uh, whatever it happens to be, trailer, fender, doesn't really matter. You're gonna climb up on whatever it is, so you don't want it to have to have the fence all the time. Ask for that. Right there. She's trying. No. You don't release completely. There. There we go. Bring that hip back to me. Good girl, there we go. Now this time we didn't have to get clear to the fence, right? Instead, she made it part way and it pops back into her head. Oh, I get it, I know what you're doing. This is, I love this because it's, it's an example of release, but it's also so important in how we finish a horse. You have to take a horse through from the basics of the exercise to the end, to where they understand what the cue is and what it means. Sometimes, as trainers, we make a mistake of thinking that training is all about aha moments. Aha moments are great, they're a lot of fun, but training is repetition until the horse knows what we're asking. So ask her again, Ruby. Bring that, there we go. And bring her all the way over here, right where I want her. Perfect, perfect. Now, she did it one time, does she know what heavens know? We'll reward on her, release on her. I'm not even gonna get on her back yet because what I wanna do is make this really a good thing. So I'll lead her off and we'll set her up and do it again. I wanna to get to where she doesn't need the stick. All she needs is my hand. All she needs to know is that I will. Now right here I want her to hurry. Oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. And then force it, come all the way. Good. And you pick where you want her to stand. You get to pick that, right? Training is consistency. It really is. Your horse will never be any more consistent than you are. We'll step on her here. Just ride her around one little ride. And then we'll go right back over there and we'll get rid of the little stick. But when I get rid of the stick, I'm not going to throw it away for good because I don't know that she's got it. So what I'll do instead is I'll just put it here against my mounting block, step up on my mounting block, ask her to come on over. It really is that simple, right? Now, when I'm out on the trail, a lot of times, <clears throat> I'll show you one of the things I do. What do you do? Because you don't carry the little, you don't carry the little dressage whip with you, right? I don't. So, what I've learned to do is come up with things, and right down to the reinforcer being my index finger. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean. Right over here. The important thing for you to get is not that you have the right tool. The important thing for you to get is the concept of what we're doing. So if I ask her to come over and she fails to respond, I'll just reach back here and tap her. You can use the end of your leather rein, or you can use a stick, a, a branch off of a tree, anything. But I discovered on most horses, if you've done your homework at home, your index finger and your middle finger together will work. And that's all the more that you need to get this horse to move over and, and put their body where you want it. It's that simple, right? There's nothing more to it. So you wanna practice it. You wanna ride this horse around one of the mistakes we make as trainers, I think a lot of times, is that we do something once or twice and we think that's enough. We think the horse has kind of got it. I want to ride my horse around, play with it, get her totally distracted, right? 
I want to get this horse's mind off on other things and then come back to it. The mistake we make, if we do something, we practice it for 15 minutes, the horse does it right one time, and we think, well, there, we've got it. When actually, we need to test it. Ooh. Take her brain and let her think about other things, right? And then we'll come back to that exercise and change it up a little bit. Ooh. First time we'll do it, we just come over here where it's real easy, do exactly what we've been doing. Wait on her, but don't nag on her. All the way. I want that hip right there, right into the mounting block where it's nice and easy. Okay. But now, Let's change it up a little. Ride her right over here. Let her deposit me back to the fence. Right here, I use the rein. And just move that rein a little bit and remind her, bring that hip all the way. There we go. It doesn't matter what we're trying to teach our horses. The more we can mix it up and give them the same cue. <clears throat> I said earlier, your horse will never be any more consistent than you are. If the answer to the question is always changing, the horse will never really understand what the question is. Let me give you one of my favorite examples. <clears throat> if you were in first grade and they taught you that two plus two was four, then they came back tomorrow and they said, what's two plus two? And you said four and they said, no, it's six. Okay, it's six. So the next day they came back and they say, what's two plus two? And you say six and they say, no, 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 it's eight. So now you've started to figure out that two plus two is always means two more. So the next day they come back and they say, what's two plus two? And you say, 10. And they say, no, it's four. Everybody knows it's four. If the answer keeps changing to the question, the horse will never know what answer to give you. The question always needs to be the same and the answer always needs to be the same. The environment can be drastically different. We can do anything, we can change the environment any way we want, right? We can take this horse, put her on the wrong side of me, right? We've changed the environment, but she's going to figure it out. The answer is the same to the same question. It is always the same. Move that hip to the last spot where you want it, right there. I want that hip to swing into me where all I have to do is step up here readily and easily. So I'm hoping that from this lesson, you can take this lesson and apply it to what you're doing with your horses and everything you're doing. Focus on your release, focus on your timing, focus on your consistency, and watch how good your horses get. There is no more important piece of horsemanship, in my opinion, than the release. Release is absolutely everything. You can teach a horse anything as we're showing here with this exercise. We're teaching the horse to move into pressure and do what's absolutely not natural for the horse. And we're doing that by using release. All I do is when she tries, I release. How much pressure you use isn't relevant. You can use as much or as little pressure as you want. Pressure only motivates the horse to think of how to get a release. So once the horse is thinking, we release them when they're correct. In this exercise, we're releasing when they step into pressure. In a stop, the stop becomes a release. In the fly and lead change, the fly and lead change becomes a release. In a spin, the spin becomes a release. We start taking what we want to teach our horse and putting, making it the release. Work your horse every place else, release him into what you want him to do. 
And I love this exercise. I wanted to put it early in this year's season because it's so relevant in everything else that we're gonna do for the rest of the year. If your timing is off on your release, it doesn't ruin your training program. It slows it down. If you release too soon, it slows it down. What you really wanna watch for is when to release. How do I know when to release, Ken? Here's how. Ask yourself this question constantly. What is this horse doing that I can reward it for? Is it, draw, is it trying or not? If your question that you ask yourself is, what is he doing wrong that I need to discipline him for? You will miss the good stuff that's happening. Ask yourself, what's he doing that I can release? And you will start catching the release and you'll be right on time. You know, we enjoy bringing this show to you and it's something that's been a part of my family for more than half of my boy's life. They, they have been involved in this from the time they were little. I remember Trent in his diapers the very first time we were filming. I always want to take the moment to encourage you to involve your family in what you're doing. God created these horses solely for our enjoyment. That's why they're here. And they're an amazing gift from Him. The best way to enjoy them is with your family. Thank you so much for joining us this time. And until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at kenmcnabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride.